Hi everybody, Angel here with ConfidenceIsCatchy.com. Thanks for tuning in. Happy Takeaway Tuesday. We are here uh, on our My Confidence Challenge live stream to talk about Takeaway Tuesday for our most recent challenge, which we called Showing Up Unfiltered. And uh, the reason we chose this particular challenge is our sponsor this week, Karen C.L. Anderson, is the author of a fantastic book called Difficult Mothers, Adult Daughters. And this is kind of like a second version of this book for her. Um, it was out under another title, and she's recently redone it. And uh, Karen had uh, come up with some really interesting concepts, things that we uh, were going to look at in our challenge. And we broke that into three parts. Um, so for those of you that are new, um, welcome to our Takeaway Tuesdays where we talk about the challenge we did over the weekend. And uh, if you've missed it, you might want to go to our YouTube page, which is uh, Confidence is Catchy, and, uh, and take a look at the YouTube video for last week's challenge uh, dated last Thursday. Um, so what we did was basically break this challenge into three parts. Uh, we had a photo journal of um, things about you that you didn't really, you know, that weren't really putting your best foot forward. Let's put it that way. Um, I had showed you some pictures in the uh, in the in the challenge of um, things that Karen was doing. That was part of a challenge that she was doing called um, "Showing Up 2018," and she put some information in our. Conf uh, my confidence challenge page about that particular challenge which is uh, based on someone else's work and uh, basically what I did with that part of the challenge which was part three of the challenge so I just took some pictures of parts of my body things that didn't yeah just you know like it's not perfect <laughs> you know what I'm saying like it could be improved um, took a few pictures I'm gonna post those uh, in a few minutes when I'm done with the live stream so you can see some of the stuff that I took but the whole idea of that was just for you guys to embrace that idea. Take a few pictures of yourself when you're unfiltered, when you're not, uh, you know, all glammed up and ready to go out, when you're just being you. You know, when you got your fuzzy socks on and your pajama bottoms and nothing matches, or like last night when I was covered in mud and grass because I, I was playing with my kid outside, um, literally mud and grass all over me. Um, and of course he was wet from the sprinkler, so, you know, he had to hug me and get handprints on me, all of that. You know, that's, that's part of being a mom and that's part of just having fun. Uh, but you know, you don't look like a, a rock star when you do that, right? So, you know, that kind of activity, those kind of things, that's the kind of pictures we were looking for. Just something that really shows you unfiltered. And if you want to post some of the stuff that you took over the weekend, we'd love to see it. Now, parts um, one and two of this challenge were more of a journaling challenge, and that was based on some of the questions that Karen posed to us uh, as part of this um, idea of uh, thinking about our moms and the messages about confidence that come downstream, so to speak, uh, from the mother figures in our lives. And um, we've had some people say that this challenge was a little bit difficult because it was something they really had to reflect on and they hadn't really thought of before. And maybe it also kind of puts you face to face with some things that you were taught that maybe they don't fit for you anymore. Um, or maybe you saw some things in yourself that you're like, oh, wow, I'm more like my mom than I thought. <laughs> um, so, you know, hey, we all have mothers. We all have mother figures in our lives. And sometimes uh, the messages we get are great, and sometimes the mess messages are mixed, and that's really all this was about was just to get conscious about what did we learn from those women about confidence. And so part one was a written journaling exercise, and we had some questions, and I sat down and actually answered these questions um, for myself, and it's, one of them was, you know, what did your mother teach you about confidence? And I wrote down that my mother was always very competent, very smart. She was a woman in, a, in the midst of men in her career. She was de definitely above and beyond uh, what most women would have aspired to at that time um, in her career. And um, she was the moneymaker in her house. And so for me, I always equated success and, and um, either business success or career success with that and competency in that arena with confidence. And, and for me, I always saw those two intertwined. Um, I had my mom kind of up on a pedestal. She went to school late in life to get her degree. Um, that was ingrained in me that, you know, you go to school and you um, become competent in what you do and, and therefore you are rewarded and your confidence comes from that. Um, and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, that's one of the things, one of the pillars of my confidence program is to find out what you're good at. And so it's okay to be competent. It's okay to be well-educated. It's okay to be um, really good at what you do. Uh, and, and that's what I saw in my mom was that, that that was where her a lot of her confidence came from. 
and uh, did her words match her actions? Um, yes and no. And and this is where it got a little um, interesting for me because the disconnect, if you will, was that what I saw was not that my mother lost any confidence over this, but that my mother lost other things, right? What my mother lost in the trade-off of being a woman in a man's world and being the money maker and being the one that was competent and smart and out in the business community, um, she lost time with her family. She lost time with me. She lost time with my dad. And uh, she also had an incredible level of stress, um, one that most other mothers of my age group, you know, most of the people around me, their mothers didn't have that kind of stress at home uh, or, or brought that kind of stress home. They, they weren't running grant programs for hospitals. You know what I'm saying? Like they weren't doing big projects like that. Um, their jobs were far lower on the food chain. And so there's a trade-off, right? So that's what I learned uh, from my mom, both in her actions and her words. And um, it's funny because um, part of this challenge, part, challenge number two was um, to, to share and compare with someone. And so, of course, I went to the source because, you know, she's one door away from me. So I said, so, mom, how do you define confidence? And it was very interesting because what she said was um, she would define confidence as the ability to get conflicting opinions or conflicting desires from people and be able to um, still handle that. Uh, and I thought it was very interesting that her definition of confidence was an external definition. It was defined by the actions or wants or beliefs of others. And I thought, well, hmm, that's pretty interesting, right? Um, not those, how those people reflected back on her or what they thought of her or how she projected herself outward. It was her ability to handle whatever drama their conflicting energy would bring. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting that that's confidence to her, right? To be able to handle other people's drama. So I started thinking about, well, what was confidence or what did she teach me about confidence and where that disconnect might have been. And here's why this lady's picture behind me is important. This lady right here is Rusty Warren. And if you're not familiar with who Rusty Warren is, you will want to look her up on Google, okay? Um, Rusty Warren was a comedian. And um, I don't know exactly when her career started or ended, um, but as you can see, I have three of her comedy albums on vinyl, and I got these from my mom <laughs> uh, many, many years ago. And I listened to them when I was a teenager. Um, she is absolutely filthy, and it's fantastic. Um, Rusty Warren was known for being one of the first female comics to talk about sex openly. And she herself is credited with saying, you know, she was one of the first women to ever publicly say that women actually like sex. When we weren't even telling our men that we like sex, she was telling the world it was okay. She is a feminist by all, a loud, brash one at that. And I learned so much from listening to these albums uh, because I learned that you can be loud and you can love sex and you can say that. And you can be brash and bold and still um, be listened to and still be heard and, and laughed with, not just at. Uh, but you can imagine that if, if this was, you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and she was the first person out there doing this, like before Rosie, okay, before um, Lisa Lampanelli, before all of these comics that are loud and brash now, right, there was Rusty. And Rusty, beautiful woman, um, had basically just learned that you know people reacted to her talking back to her audience, and so her whole routine was really like you know talking to the haters and uh, and being very very upfront about sex. And and it, I learned so much from these because it it kind of gave me license to be a little bit bolder uh, and a little bit more. Um, open about sexuality and, and all of that. And that has been a huge role, it had a huge role in my confidence and in the way that I think about the world. And so um, the fact that my mom gave me these albums when I was probably too young to be listening to them, <laughs> um, it says a lot about uh, what I learned about confidence through her actions, meaning her in, in giving these to me. Um, this kind of set a tone in my mind um, very early on that um, you know you could you could do it differently. You didn't have to be a wallflower. <laughs> you didn't have to sit in the in the background and um, 
And if you don't know Rusty Warren, definitely look her up. There's some great stuff on Google about her. Um, she really does. She, she's going to go down in history as probably one of the great comedians of um, our collective generation, those of us that are uh, been around for a little while. So I definitely uh, would tell you to go check her out and, and see if you can li listen to any of her routines uh, on YouTube now. Um, they're really interesting. But what I found about that was that being loud and and swearing and you know being honest and just being open was um, part of being confident. But then the other thing, the thing about you know how do I define it for myself? The other thing about being confident is the opposite of that: being able to be both, being able to be open and loud and brash and ballsy and all of those words that you know we attribute to women that that, that speak their truth but also giving ourselves license to pull back and be quiet and rest and um, reflect and journal and walk in the woods alone just to think and to be able to be both of those things, that you don't have to be on all the time, you don't have to be perfect all the time. In fact, perfection is, you know, doesn't exist. Um, and and that, that for me is the definition of confidence, to be able to just be free to be whatever you are at that moment. And that's one of the things that I love about our sponsor's work is because a lot of the stuff that I see Karen write about is just her finding her freedom to be herself, whatever that means in the moment. And I'm going to encourage you to go to Karen's website um, and, and check out some of the blog posts. I hope you can see this. And of course, I'll put it up. Um, but go to, go to her website. It's KarenCLAnderson.com. Okay. KCL Anderson. Sorry. KCLAnderson.com and go see some of the blog posts that she's written. It's really interesting to see what Karen's written uh, because a lot of it is just about just being you and allowing yourself both the light and the dark, allowing yourself to be loud and obnoxious when you need to be and to be quiet and serene when you need that. And that's what I love uh, and that's what I think confidence is all about is being able to be both. Um, and There was one last question that Karen posed to us and it was how how are you holding yourself back from your definition of confidence? And what is it that might be holding your back? And, and I really thought long and hard about that one. And what I wrote down was um, there's a difference between confidence and uh, responsibility. Um, or I guess for me, responsibility, the fact that I have a, a little one and my mom that I'm taking care of, the fact that I have a mortgage and a job and all of those types of things, those are the things that I won't say they hold me back. They just keep me kind of in check. Um, because there's a lot of loud, brash, naughty language that I would normally use <laughs> up in here that doesn't translate out into the world a lot of the time. Um, and so this challenge being showing up unfiltered um, is kind of one of those things like I filter myself quite a bit. And for those of you who know me personally, what comes out of me once you get to know me unfiltered is probably not a lot of what you see on this video right now. So um, the unfiltered version of me, I think, is a hell of a lot more fun. And sometimes I wish I was like Rusty, where I could just be that and and bold and crazy and obnoxious if that's what need, is needed. And um, sometimes my responsibilities keep me from living fully into that. And so um, if there was anything holding me back, it would be that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure some of you are in that same boat. So I'd love to love to hear the things that are holding you back. And I'd love to hear how you came up with this. You know, what, what came up for you when you started looking at this challenge? What did you remember about your past? What did you remember about your mom or your mother figure? What kinds of things did uh, you take pictures of to remind yourself that, you know, we are, it's okay to not be perfect all the time. It's okay not to be on all the time. It's okay to show both your light and your dark. And uh, it's okay to be a whole person, just like uh, Karen talks about in her blogs and her writing, that in order to be a whole person, we need to we need to love all of ourselves. We need to love the light, the dark, the beautiful, the not so beautiful, and uh, we need to integrate all of that into one loving package uh, that we take with us. So I hope that this takeaway uh, is something that has um, impacted you the way it has impacted me. Uh, on Thursday, we will have our next challenge. Uh, we are going to be moving into a kind of a different segment of what we're doing. So uh, we have some cool sponsors coming up. I'm really excited about some of the challenges we're bringing to you in the next couple of weeks. So definitely check in with us on Thursday at 4 uh, right here on the My Confidence Challenge 
group and of course always on YouTube. Um, do make sure you subscribe, like, and share and I will make sure to put you in the raffle. Uh, for those of you who have forgotten, our grand prize raffle is going to be drawn at the end of the 12 weeks and it is for a um, little getaway for two to a uh, resort hotel. So um, you do want to do your likes and shares and comments so that I can get you in and of course get you all of the prizes uh, that go along every week. Um, we will have a copy, I'm hoping, of Karen's book to give away and uh, we'll be picking that winner tomorrow. I'll let you all know before Thursday who gets that, okay? Thanks everyone for tuning in and we will see you on Thursday. Have a great day.